Hey guys, today we are going to talk about how to take a pentatonic scale that you already know and match it up with chords so that it sounds good and harmonizes. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Peace. So here's what we're going to work on today is we're going to work on pentatonic scales. So with this, you will have already worked on a whole lot. And what we're going to go over is how to take that and match it along with chords so that there's one guitar player, piano player, or a backing track or something making the chords and most of the song. And what you're doing is you're using a scale to play a guitar solo and just sort of um, just decorate it, an ornament on top of it. And so what we're going to be doing, well, actually, I guess the problem is that right here, that will only fit with one set of chords, but songs could have a lot of different sets of chords, right? And so we have to match the correct fret to start this pattern on, because like it could be here, it could be here, here, or actually just anywhere. It can be anywhere, but we have to be able to find the fret to do this that matches with the chords that are being played by the other person, right? And so the first step in this is to make sure that you know the names of the notes on the E string. Um, I'm going to ask these. You could actually just talk in this part, right? But like... Um, do you remember what note this is? Fret three. Is that... G? Yeah, G. Fret five. A. A, good. G, A. B. B. C sharp. C sharp. C sharp. And then 12 is E again. Okay, and it's the same on both, because they're the both the E string. So I might kind of go back and forth between referring to the high and the low, but it's the same on both. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, and, okay, so the first part, the part that you you will need to know, this is, I, I'm probably going a little bit out of order here. I'm sorry, I'm going to do my best, though. When you know the key of the song, right, you take that note, the key of the song would be something like a letter and then minor or major, right? So it could be like the key could be A minor or the key could be G major or something like that, right? And... So say, for example, the key of the song is E major, right? If it's made, then, well, first of all, find the E, right? If it's E major, find the E, that's right here. And then if it's major, put your pinky finger on that note, and the scale will fit with it. If it was E minor, you would put your pointer finger on the E. Ooh, I messed up on video. Up when I'm being okay, um, another example. I'll just do a couple of examples in a row here. Let's say that the key of the song was B minor. First, I would find B. So E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. There's B. And then for minor, I put my pinky finger on the correct note. And now it's lined up so that the notes I play will work good with the, the notes in the chords. Um, if it was B major, instead I would put my pointer finger on it. I'm sorry. Oh, I might have said that back. Okay. If it's B major, I put my pinky on B. If it's B minor, I put my pointer. That's minor. That's major. Same thing. A major. A minor. Good, good, good? Yep. Okay. Uh... Cool, let's go ahead and stop it there. Okay, so what we talked about a minute ago is how you're going to line up the notes you play so that they fit with the chords. But, um, how do you know what key the song is in? That's not something I've really talked about yet. Well, there's a couple of different ways to do this. If you're using a jam track on YouTube, it'll probably just say it in the title or the description. So that is a good place to start with this because that way there's no ambiguity and it's, you know, if you're literally just reading the answer sheet, it's kind of hard to get a wrong answer. 
Um, a second way, if it's like a real song, you could also just look it up by looking up the the looking it up online. That's that's also doable. That's not the worst thing ever. You can ask somebody. That's fine. But let's just assume that all those other answers don't work, and you have to just kind of brute force figure it out. Okay. The quick way that I do it is that I would list I would list the chords of the song, and then after I have a list, I would eliminate any duplicates so that I just have a list of ingredients, right? Like the way it is on the back of like a can of something. They don't list how much is in it of each ingredient. They just list what the ingredients are. So I'll get the list of chords that are in the song just like that. I just have, you know, what chords are in it. From there, I'm going to count, do I have more major chords or do I have more minor chords? And whatever one I have less of, I'm just going to eliminate all of them as the possibility. Then, out of what remains, I'll look for two that are next to each other in the alphabet and eliminate those two. And then whatever, there should almost always be only one chord left over at that point that would be the answer. So, uh, for example, say that the chords of the song are E, 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 A, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, B. Okay? The first thing I do is I eliminate duplicates. Then I count. Do I have more major chords or more minor chords? In this case, I have three majors and two minors. So I'll eliminate the minors now. And it is usually going to be the minors that you eliminate. Just, it just is. There's not a reason for that. It could be the other way, but it just usually is. Um, then out of what's left, um, find two that are next to each other in the alphabet. A's and B. A and B. Yeah, so these two are next to each other in the alphabet, so the one that is left over is the answer. Make sense? Cool. Okay, another example. What if the chords were um, B minor, G, D, F sharp minor, A? So... First thing, no duplicates, we're good. We have more major, so I'll eliminate the minors. And then this is kind of a tricky one because G and A are not next to each other in the English alphabet, but because the music alphabet goes in a loop, they are musically next to each other, and the answer is D. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, let's erase this. And let's see, maybe like two more examples. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Should be fine. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so actually the next one, I'm just going to write it up there and then just tell me the answers or if you want to do it with the pen, just give me the camera. So we can have... Okay, so what's the first thing I should do? Take out the duplicate. So C and G. And then oh, and G. we have more major than minor, so take out the major. Minor. Yeah. Then so we have C, G, yeah. um, F and G are next to each other, eliminate or C. Got it. Cool. You know what's actually something that I forgot to mention a minute ago too? Is the first chord in the song is almost always the answer. I don't know why. It doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes it isn't that way. But maybe like 80 or 85% of the time, I don't want to say 90% of the time, it's not that common, but really, really often, the first chord in the song is what key it is. Um, like, really often. So, that should maybe be your actual step one, right? It's just whatever the first one is, just like, instantly, without even thinking about it, just like, say that as the answer, you know? Because you're usually right, and you could just say that as your answer, and then do the steps in your head, but like, you're almost always going to be right when you just blurt out the first chord. So let's say that the chords were... Uh, okay, let's say that those were the chords of the song. Um, just instantly, just say the key's F. Yeah. You know? Um, now we'll actually do the steps to find out if that's right. So, no... Okay, there's a duplicate. Cool. Erase duplicates. Um... Put out the minor. We have more major than minor. 
So we get rid of the minors. B and C are next to each other. B and C are next to each other. F is the answer. So that guess would have been correct there, right? Um, let's see. Here's another one. Okay, so I'm being a little bit tricky here. There's the same number of majors as minors, so just pick one, right? If we eliminate the minors, we're going to end up with D and E, yes. and A is the answer. If we pick the minors, we'll end up with B and C are next to each other. F sharp minor is the answer, right? Yep. But those would actually be the same scales, so you'd be safe. Sometimes there's just two different correct answers. Do you want me to show that on guitar real quick? Yep. Okay, so... <clears throat> Okay, so the way I was talking before, um, this note is A, right? So if I want A major, I would put my pinky there. This note is F sharp, so if I want F sharp minor, I would put my pointer finger there. So the notes of the A major scale are the same notes as the F sharp minor scale. So it doesn't matter which path I chose, I arrived both ways. It will be the correct notes for the song. Maybe like the context of the slang and how we talk is a little bit different, but I mean, it sounds right. Cool. Yep. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions about this before we move on some? Okay, cool. Let's just... Stop there.